Uh, welcome everybody in uh, Fabriani in Aquarello 2020, our first meeting uh, of panel discussion. And um, the topic, uh, the very first topic we are going through is contemporary, contemporary watercolor in the world. It's probably one of the most interesting panel and I'm sure our moderator, Lauren McCracken, is um, uh, very fond of this uh, topic and he will do great to show us whatever is happening in the world. Um, moderator, as I just told you, is Lauren McCracken from the United States. Uh, panelists are Julio Jorge from Portugal, Gon Gonzalo Cid from Argentina, Bia Strugo from Argentina, Leah Nixon from England, and Iglia Rapi from International Group. Um, I remind all our audience that uh, the panel uh, uh, recording you can see later on in YouTube in a few days, soon, at, soon after our festival will be finished. And I also remind you that our task is not to give uh, information and to give answer to any questions uh, we, uh, you, we can have, but it's um, to grow a number of points, uh, uh, people in the world and all our leaders and artists uh, can um, uh, think about and later on we, we can share and discuss on. I hope all of you, you can enjoy this meeting and I thank all the uh, panelists and Lauren for organizing it. Lauren, I give you the line. Thank you, Anna. I am Lauren McCracken and uh, I live in uh, the south side of the city of Fort Worth which is in the northern part of the state of Texas, which is located in the southwest part of the United States of America. And I'm an unabashed realist watercolorist, and I started painting about the time I turned 60, and it has really changed my life. And I'm so delighted to be here to moderate this panel today, and I'm gonna ask our panelists to introduce themselves and briefly tell you something about themselves. Lee, can we start with you? Okay, yes, hello, I'm Lee Nixon. Um, I live near Manchester, which is Northwest England. Um, I love plain air painting, uh, that's my main thing, and I'm also a tutor, um, I teach here and abroad. Thanks. Great. Great, Gonzalo, can you introduce yourself? Hello, uh, my name is Gonzalo Cid. I'm from Argentina. Uh, I'm a painter based, based in Buenos Aires. And, and I have my little studio in San Antonio de Padua, which is 30 kilometers west of Buenos Aires City. I paint, paint mostly cityscapes and landscapes, and many times uh, represent uh, hidden places of the cities and, and towns. And you also teach, don't you, Gonzalo? I, I, I'm also teach, yes. Yes, in Buenos Aires and in San Antonio de Padua. Fabulous. Igli, introduce yourself, please. Thank you, thank you, Laura. Hello, everyone. My name is Igli Arapi, the international leader of Fabriano in Aquarello 2020. Uh, I graduated from uh, the Academy of Fine Arts in Italy, and uh, all the time I dedicate my time uh, to spreading the beauty of this passion work. It's uh, always nice to paint on plein air. Uh, I like to paint nature, uh, uh, to capture light, colors, and its effects, and every surface. But I also I paint the fascinating uh, uh, world of uh, the portrait. But I, uh, I also paint the, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, subject is very beautiful. And uh, I believe, I, I love what I do because uh, I am, uh, like you, a box of emotions. Great, thank you, Igli. All right, last but certainly not least, our only female participant, the lovely Bia. Bia, can you, you introduce yourself? Yes, hi everybody, I am Bia Strugo, I am from Argentina, also watercolor painting. Painter, I love all the time seeking from some figurative shapes to get transparent watercolor abstract. Right. Uh, Anything else, Bia, you'd like to add? 
No. Okay. All right. Our panelists are going to present an, our overview of what we see as the state of the art of watercolor around the globe. I'm going to start with a few remarks, and then each of the panelists is going to speak for five minutes. Our total program will be about 30 minutes, and if we have time, I'll provide a synopsis of what has been presented. Before this pandemic started, and I was going to give this presentation to you, I would have been very, very optimistic and upbeat about the growth and good health of watercolor in the world market. And I believe that we will return to that health in another year. It may, be, it may take that long, may take a little longer, but the, under, the fundamental factors that were driving the growth of watercolor in the world market are still very much with us. So I'm pretty optimistic about the long-term uh, growth of watercolor around the world. There are a number of examples of this growth, and let me just share a couple of them with you. Uh, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence from the manufacturers of watercolor materials and other art materials that the demand for these products was growing significantly around the world. Many of the manufacturers have had to increase their production over the last two years just to keep up with the growth in the market. And th this is a market really, oh, it's not just in the United States or in England, but it's in India, it's in South America, it's in lots of places where more and more people want to buy watercolor materials. And this is a sign of growth. There has been also a lot of consolidation in, in this marketplace. Some of it will be in the negative area, but a lot of it bodes well for the growth of watercolor in the market. Now, there are two fundamental issues that cause this growth. One is the aging of the population, where the, usually the lady of the house buys her first brush when the children finish go, uh, high school and go off to college, and she has more time to paint. And then the man of the family buys a paintbrush when he retires and has time to focus on things that he might enjoy. Discretionary income is another factor. Discretionary income has been growing around the world for the last 10 years. This pandemic will cause a dent in that and slow it down. But I believe because the other fundamentals are strong, that will also come back. The third factor is that there is just a general growth and in interest of watercolor around the world. And that is being driven primarily by activities such as this, Fabriano and Aquarella. This has become a major force in the, uh, in the market. Uh, you know, who would have thought, you know, 10 years ago that 2000 watercolorists would come to a remote mountain village to just talk about and view watercolor. And now it is a world force. So I think all of these things together will continue to cause the interest in watercolor to grow, the purchase of watercolors will in increase, and a lot more people will participate in watercolor. Now let's hear from my panelists. We're going to ask them to talk about their own situation and then tell us their view of what's happening in, in the area around them and in their country and in the world. And again, we'll start with Lee. Would you give us your views? Okay, thanks, Lauren. Um, you mentioned um, about major watercolor events and exhibitions. Well, that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, their popularity, uh, a tremendous enthusiasm for watercolor. Um, without it, where would we be? And I want to talk how it's affecting me personally. Um, when I first became involved in watercolour, um, it was reasonably quiet in England. Um, watercolour societies um, allowed acrylic paint as a watercolour medium, uh, but I preferred pure watercolour and I wanted to keep my paintings reasonably transparent. Um, so when I discovered uh, Fabriano and saw what was happening there, I got really excited. I mean, it turned 
turned my life around. Um, over 70 countries at that time visited and everyone was just using transparent watercolour, uh, creating wonderful textures, uh, rich tones, strong colour, um, you know, lights and darks, flowing washes. It was like an explosion, um, an explosion of uh, ideas, techniques and colours. And this, this is contemporary watercolour, in my opinion. Um, it seemed like watercolour was limitless in its versatility. Um, and I was hoping for, for something like this. Um, and I found it in Fabriano. Um, hundreds of people were there because they loved watercolour. I suppose we all see things in different ways, but for me, um, watercolour has a, there's a deeper, deeper appreciation going on. I think watercolour um, touches, touches us in a way we can hardly explain. Um, for me, watercolour talks and breathes. You know, pigment comes alive on the paper. Um, it's so beautiful with all the granulation. Um, and it continues to speak even when it's dry, you know. Um, we all know what a good watercolour looks like you know, because it glows um, and it sparkles and the luminosity just shines out. Uh, so I suppose this is when uh, a painting becomes art. Um, it truly affects us all. So, uh, and you did mention about the new techniques of manufacturing, um, increased production and distribution. Well, that is essential and necessary, I know, but, um, Without excitement or passion, um, a driving momentum, um, watercolour would ultimately lose its energy and popularity. Um, so we, we have to keep the ball rolling. Um, I visited India last year and that was amazing because we met many students in schools there and they were wanting us to share our experiences with them uh, because they were looking for a career in art. Um, I remember them so well, with so much talent. Um, I know some are already hooked on watercolour and definitely, definitely will play a big part in the contemporary world. Um, IWS, the International Watercolour Society, also holds exhibitions all over the world. And these are great avenues into international watercolour events. Um, so it's, it's been a revelation for me. Um, I found out that watercolour internationally um, is revered, loved and respected. Um, we're all connected um, and it's the enthusiasm we share together um, which is going to um, contribute to the growth of contemporary wor uh, watercolour worldwide. Um, wow. I think okay. that's it. I just want to say though, on Instagram, July is World Watercolour Month, if you didn't know already. <laughs> Great, fabulously. Thanks for reminding us of that. Uh, Gonzalo, would you like to share your views? Yes, well, thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Um, I agree with you with lots of the, the, the points that you remarked in your, in your speech. Um, let me tell you that the um, general situation here in Argentina um, it, it's, it's bad in, in the economical terms um, and it's getting worse uh, with the COVID uh, problem. Um, so if, if I can tell you about my personal situation of my studio here in Buenos Aires, uh, I must say that um, against any forecast, uh, I've noticed an increase year after year of the number of participants. I mean, in workshops uh, and, and regular classes. And of course, I said, uh, I'm the new guy in the neighbor, so it's normal that the people want to know me. But if I go out and, and talk with uh, some other artists uh, of Argentina or in South America, uh, owners of art supplies, um, even owners of uh, galleries, they can say the same. Uh, people is, uh, more people is uh, 
is painting with watercolor, buying materials, uh, pigments, papers, uh, and, and so on. Um, in fact, in Argentina, we can see how the number of, of artists uh, uh, are arise. Um, and this is amazing because you can see uh, new talents and young people painting with watercolor and, and showing their works and, and in different events uh, all around the world. Um, also, we can observe here in Argentina, and I think it's more of the same in South America, how uh, in many important and traditional competition and events uh, in which only have participated uh, works producing oils or acrylics, now you can find works of excellent quality made with watercolor. Um, even more, more uh, some of those watercolors won first prizes. So I can see a change of mind about how people see watercolor uh, in our region. Uh, there is lots of work to do also, but I think this uh, is very important and the work of Ana Masinisa and so many other organizers, it's very important to, to bring the watercolor to the people and, and get more and more, more painters uh, all around the world. Uh, particularly and personally, I think this explosion in terms of and the number of people who wants to paint in watercolor uh, is due to several factors. Uh, technological advances, as you said, in, in, the, in the making of pigments, papers, and, and brushes, but also social networks and internet. Uh, and this is a very important thing because maybe a painter who lives in South America uh, may be aware of new trends, uh, new materials, work of other artists, uh, tendencies, contests, ex exhibitions, and, and this is a very important thing. Um, and the other important fact, uh, factor is that uh, the, the schools and the possibility to people to access to classes, to classes of very important master watercolor teachers. Uh, I know this is a topic for uh, another panel debate, but this is very important for me also. Um, in this uh, very hard times, uh, which COVID hit every single aspect of our life, I think watercolor is not an exception. And we have two ways. Uh, we can see all the bad aspects of the pandemic, like the difficult to sell and to buy, to sell and to ship, I'm sorry, um, our, our work. Uh, the difficulty to, to difficulties to, to buy materials uh, and also of our classrooms. Our classrooms are empty right now. But we can see the good ones, and those are referred to the possibility to expand more and more watercolor through a social network. Uh, our classroom, classrooms are moving to the video call sessions, and I think people need uh, watercolor as a tool to fight against uh, COVID. Um, again, people look for watercolor in this situation because, as you know, watercolor is a non-toxic uh, material. It's easy to wash, it's easy to store at home. Uh, families can, can paint together, children, fathers, mothers. And, and I think this is uh, one of the whys. Uh, again, uh, I see, uh, we must take, I'm sorry, the opportunities to bring, that bring us this terrible situation to use them uh, for, to grow stronger. This will be end, and I think that when this happens, we will be better person and artist. Um, let, me, let me tell you uh, and end this uh, presentation uh, with a phrase from a, a poem by an Argentine, Argentine writer, Francisco Narvaez, that says more or less like this, I'm sorry for the translation, but uh, it says that something like this. What the tree has a flowery leaves, what is buried. So I'm optimist, optimistic about the, the future of watercolor. Um, and thank you very much for, for your patience. <laughs> Great, Gonzalo, that, that was really wonderful. Iglia, how about sharing with us your views? <laughs> thank you, Lauren. Um, I, I know I have a, some some questions, some 
some idea. But uh, the first, I know the different techniques, oil, uh, acrylic, charcoal, pencil, but the watercolor has uh, an extra surprise. <laughs> I notice uh, this characteristic when, uh, when I paint outdoors in the studio and also when I teach it to my students. It is very exciting uh, as, a, as a technique. Um, due to the new contemporary language of art, video art, uh, performance, uh, etc., the painting of the easel remained in the shadow until 20 years ago. Uh, even more, the watercolor for many galleries in Europe has remained a fragile technique uh, of the past and a little proposed. But, uh, but in the recent years, it, had, uh, it has had the visibility it des uh, deserves, thanks to the many collaborations of uh, associations in the world, such uh, Fabriano in Acorello with Anna Simisa. Um, I don't need to say to say it. Uh, uh, well, the watercolor is already a contemporary technique, uh, so we just we uh, we just have to promote it. Uh, it's natural. It's poor above all because it is uh, truly pure as water. I think it is in, is uh, necessary to find the way that watercolor fits more in the collector's market. Even the state must support artists who only do this job and uh, who often have to survive the reality of life. They struggle to emerge. One idea uh, what, um, one idea would to be to create a virtual box of cultural exchange, okay, and invite artists who do not have the economic opportunity to attend events abroad. This my my idea. <laughs> Helps to give international visibility every year to new emerging artists. I think to uh, I think it is necessary to spread a new culture in the watercolor market among buyers, collectors, gallery owners, and to give them scientific information on the lifetime durate, duration uh, of the materials and of the painting itself. This is my thing, all my thing. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Igli. That that was that was well thought through. Uh, and now, Bia, we turn to you for your insights. Okay. Thank you, Laureen. I am absolutely agree. What uh, are you saying? But I want to remark about our region. What is happening in our region? Our uh, pandemic time. In our region, in South America, Argentina principally, because I am Argentina, um, watercolor is growing up. This is, um, this is a technique very new, uh, very new over here, but for example, Peru and Mexico have a long trajectory in this. In Argentina, we have just growing fast, and there are a very good watercolorists. About quality, I am agree with uh, you, watercolor are increasing, selling along the world. But I want to resolve that this is not also because people prefer the ecological material, uh, instead because watercolor artists are growing up, exper experimenting, developing new techniques and new subjects. And people can appreciate this. Watercolor nowadays not mean also landscape and flower. Even these sub subjects artists are doing a great effort 
to be more creative, adding more effects. And this is a good way. And um, about pandemic, pandemic, I want to say something. Pandemic time, uh, we have to keep our mind in health. We are living under this unwanted situation and on the world. We have no word to explain, to express our pain easily. Art is a perfect vehicle to deal with this pain. Everybody feels the pain differently. We can be able to sublimate, to transform this pain on watercolors, to be hope, to stop the incredulity to accept this time for carrying us, but we have to follow creating. Let me add something. The importance of this technique is we have to pay attention on different way, on different part of the paper. So we start to paint, when we start to paint, it's like a mystic experience for me. We are playing with the material, we are playing with the water, we are playing with the color, but we are controlling, we need to control our impulse. We are thinking a lot. Even if you have a previous sketch drawing in your mind, we always are creating, doing, we have to confront to the unexpected and, told, and solve this and enjoy with this and this is a magic this is a magic thing you have to let the intuition in this uh, in this technique to the intuition conduce uh, this because the intuition push the creativity and conduce our creativity but let me say intuition without concept doesn't work and concept without intuition make a result too technical, perhaps too cold. So you have to use your intelligence and your soul to solve problems, to find different way to arrive to our goal. Because for me, intuition is synonymous of freedom. This technique stimulates people to be open mind, to be in freedom, to think in freedom. That means that one small thing could become into a big thing because art makes our perception change. To be open minded people is our responsibility with our mental health and with our society to sing in freedom, to live in freedom. And for the end, I want to sit, I want to say Nelly Oxman words. She say, all is expecting, all is known. So everybody can do it. So. Great, thanks Bia. I appreciate those, those, those wise words. Uh, We've heard from some really fabulous painters uh, today coming from very, very different parts of the world. And, but there is some commonality of our views. And I think those are, are pretty strong. Uh, we all agree that watercolor is growing. We all agree that there are certain underlying aspects uh, that are helping watercolor grow. And the primary one, it, coming out of what everybody said for me, is this the joy. If people understand and can try watercolor, they usually stay with it because it's, a, as Bia said, a mystical experience. And, and I think we all understand that. I, I'll, I'll give you one small point that you might use as you talk to your gallery owners and, and those skeptics that talk about the fragility of watercolor, just remind them that the dyes, both uh, man-made and natural, 
that go into making watercolor are exactly the same dyes that go into making oil paints. And so watercolor is no more fugitive than oil paints. It's essentially the same material. It's just the carrier, whether it's ox gall or linseed oil, it's all the same. So I think coming out of this pandemic, where a lot of us are working hard in our studios, we will continue to see the growth of watercolor and we will continue to see exploration and experimentation in this fabulous media that will continue to attract the public around the world and artists around the world to this magnificent medium. We thank you for your time and being with us today. We hope to be with you out there in the world very soon. And we hope that we will be in Fabriano next year to continue the growth in our friendships and our sharing of information. And in closing, I'd like to join with my panelists to thank Anna and her hardworking staff for continuing yeah. to keep watercolor an important medium in the world market and for the inventiveness of bringing all of us to you by these new electronic means. I think we're gonna find that Zoom and a lot of these electronic means will play a big part in what Gonzala and Iglia talk about helping the communication between watercolorists around the world. And I think that Anna and her staff and our fabulous Raul and Shanker here are helping show to the rest of the world. You don't have to be very sophisticated if you've got good help. Thank you all for being with us. Anna, do you have any closing remarks? No, Thank you. not at all. I like all, all you said and what I like more is uh, all the emotional part you focus on. And I think you gave us great points to think about for uh, next time we meet. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you all the panelists. Thank you all. Thank you. Keep Thank your you brush wet. Pleasure.